Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a comparison video of two Bachman heavyweight cars. In the rear here we have the old Spectrum runs. Uh, these were made quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of time ago. And then in the, in the front here we have a Silver Series car. Now, obviously to be fair, we have the same exact car. We both have a combine car and both being Pennsylvania. However, the comparison uh, differences are pretty similar throughout different paint schemes and different types of cars, like their observation, their sleeper Pullman car, their dining car, etc. Um, but we'll just compare these two because that's the two I have. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, first a quick bit of history. I'm not going to dive in too deep here, so I'm just going to keep the camera rolling here. Um, this car, as you know, Bachman Heavyweights. Uh, Bachman Heavyweight cars are based off of Pennsylvania prototypes. So, what that means is basically, if you, if you buy a, po a Bachman Heavyweight car uh, in a New York Central, Santa Fe, Baltimore, High, any other paint scheme, it's technically inaccurate because the prototype is a, is a Pennsylvania pr pr prototype that they just painted in different colors. So, um, the, the particular pr prototype for this combine car is a PB70 uh, car. So, PB70, how Pennsylvania named their stuff, uh, P standing for passenger, B standing for baggage, 70 standing for 70 feet long. Um, this being a combine, you know, half baggage, half passenger, uh, you know, coach, so it's PB70. Uh, in, other, in other words, their full coach cars, which are 70 feet long, is called P70. And, you know, their, their 60 foot baggage cars are called B60s. Anyways, so, I digress. So, uh, their prototype is a Pennsylvania Railroad PB70 class uh, car. Now, this is not extremely accurate. Um, the original Spectrum runs are not accurate, and then when they upgraded, upgraded, upgraded uh, to the newer runs, they didn't change anything. So both are in, have have similar similar inaccuracies um, in the sense that the the baggage compartment is too too much to the middle here. I believe in the in the actual car, the baggage was more for the front, and there was a few more windows possibly. But basically, the there's a a few things that are kind of shifted and that's a little bit wrong, but it's not a big deal. And then also it's missing a, the stirrup steps in the front here. Um, yeah, that, that's just missing for some reason. I don't know why they didn't add those, but regardless, that's one thing. And then also, um, this is obviously a very basic uh, version. Um, if you look at BLI's uh, P70 coaches, which is again very similar to this, uh, they have like electric conduits at the top. They have more de underbody detail. This this underbody detail is very generic and plain. Um, I, I unfortunately I, I didn't really do research ahead of this video, so I don't know exactly if the underbody is exactly the same. But for example, ice AC, no AC. There's there's a few variations, and I don't I don't believe this underbody is exactly accurate, but it should be a good representation. You don't really look down there anyway, so um, the accuracy is sort of there. It's definitely the closest you can get to a PB70 car on the HO market without spending a lot of money on brass or whatever, but it's I think it's a good representation, but it's definitely not 100% accurate. Alright, so with that said, uh, let's look at some of the details. Alright, starting with the front details here, the very first thing you'll note is actually uh, the, the handrails here. So, um, in the old one, these are all separately applied uh, blackened metal handrails. Um, here, let me just focus real quick. Right here, yeah, so one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, it's kind of hard to see, but anyway, anyways, all the details are separately applied and they are metal formed handrails. And the new one, you guys can see there, uh, it's all molded on, so I don't know why Bachman would downgrade from the older run to the newer run, but they did. Uh, these are all just molded on handrails, um, in fact, the ones on the bottom here are just completely missing. Uh, but it definitely looks fairly fake. You can tell like how this one, especially on the side here, is definitely molded on. Whereas the old one, sorry about that, the old one is definitely separately, separately applied as you can see there. So that's the very first difference. The second thing is the diaphragm. The older one having this um, like rubbery, rubbery diaphragm, it actually has a bit more detail. You can see some of the, some of the, um, some of the lines there on the sides. I'm sorry, I don't know much about the diaphragm specific like terminology, but anyways, the newer one is just a piece of plastic. Um, you can see here, and you can see there's a tiny little crack between the black diaphragm and the, and the Tuscan red red uh, body, and that's all it can move. That's the uh, it does go back and forth. So yeah, this one does go back and forth. However, it just goes back and forth very very little. The old one being rubber, it is flexible, but it doesn't really go like in and out. It just kind of stays solid. Um, the newer one technically moves, but it, it moves so little that it's kind of negligible. Not, uh, negligible, honestly, I don't see any uh, operational difference. And as far as looks go, the newer one is plasticky, it has a little window, the older one doesn't have a window, it is rubbery, but it, lo it looks, actually I prefer the older one look a little bit better, um, but they're both 
they're both, you know, they don't really make much of a difference. And so I don't really care, honestly. <laughs> I think they're both fine. Uh, the older one has a coupler box. Now, I did modify my coupler box to just be a standard um, coupler box just um, mounted solid, solidly on the, on the body here. Um, the original one, the coupler box actually did pivot. Uh, it pivoted on, like, the, the mounting point. Uh, but it didn't swing. The coupler box itself did not swing. The coupler obviously swung, but the coupler box like pivoted, but it didn't swing. The newer version does have a swinging coupler box. It's extended swing, so the cup, so the coupler not only swings the coupler box, but the coupler box itself also swings. And you, so you can see there's a greater motion in the coupler box. So that can potentially help potentially help you navigate header curves. Um, that being said, both cars work fine on my 22 inch radius, even 20 inch curves. Um, so I really see no difference there. Um, the new design is definitely a little bit more flushed out. However, um, again, I haven't really seen much difference. Um, if anything, it's the wheels that will derail instead of the coupler boxes. So the coupler boxes never really were an issue. Um, but yeah, that's just something to know. That's one of the differences here. But that's pretty much it for the sides. Let's move on to the uh, or on the ends here. Let's move on to the side of the car. All right, now on the sides, um, there's obviously some again very noticeable differences here. Uh, the main one being the old one's gold striping is it definitely a little bit more faded kind of a color. Um, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it's definitely more. It, it does look a little bit more gold than yellow, whereas the new one is very clearly just a yellow, not not even trying to be gold. Um, it's just a straight up yellow paint, and uh, it does have the result of making it look a little bit more, you know contrasty I guess you could say. Uh, it definitely contrasts with the Tuscan Red a little bit better but um, yeah that's just I guess personal preference. I do like the yellow on this one a little bit more um, however it's not really that noticeable. The Tuscan Red this one's a tad more faded than this new one um, the new one seems to have a bit of a, like a satin glossy almost glossy finish to the point where it, obviously a gloss coat does saturate colors more and so I think that's the main difference but the paint looks very very similar as you can see in the, in the shot here um, besides that, the paint is pretty much identical. This one's definitely a bit more matte. As I said, this one definitely has more of a bit of a satin finish. You can definitely tell with the roofs. This one's a lot more glossier compared to the older one, which is a bit more matte. Um, but that's about it. As, as far as body detail goes, they're very similar. Um, there are a few minor changes, like there's there's the three riv three line rivets. There's only two on here. Um, very minor differences, as I said, but dimensionally, they're very much accurate, or very much similar. Um, or the same, I guess you could say. The trucks are also the same. We'll worry about that later, though. Um, as I said, the stirrup steps are missing uh, on these Bachmann cars. I actually did add mine to my Spectrum, my older Spectrum one, as you can see right there. Um, sort of see. I added just a. I, I got some uh, stirrup steps from Tichy Chain Group, and I just added them there to make it a little bit more realistic. It's a bit small. It's a bit undersized, but it's fine. It does a job. But, um, yeah, that's just something that both cars were missing, uh, stock standard. Uh, one more thing is the windows. So the windows the new ones are actually flush mounted, which is really nice. Um, you know, they're, they're flush against the uh, sides, whereas the older ones, you can see there, are definitely uh, recessed. You know, it's just one piece of glass behind the behind the, um, the the body here and that basically covers up all the window covers all the windows for here it, it covers the um, oops it's so free rolling sorry uh, it covers actually the um, if you guys can see that the uh, bathroom window right there which is really cool uh, the newer one does the bathroom window I'd argue a little bit better as you can see there uh, it definitely is a little bit more pronounced however the old one it looks fine too um, and then one more thing to note oops something got derailed is because it is just a one piece of clear thick clear plastic um, when you when you close when you open up the baggage window or a door which does open up you can see the piece of glass just right there um, so you probably don't want the uh, door to be open because uh, it exposes that huge piece of glass however what that does mean is that there is a piece of glass also covering up the baggage door window which is nice weirdly enough in the new one the door also opens up, obviously, but what you'll notice is that there's actually no uh, no um, piece of glass on the door at all, which is very, very strange. You could kind of just you know stick whatever you want right through it, which is very odd to me. I it might be just this model. Maybe I got like a, defect, a, a defective model, but I mean, it's been it's mostly on both both uh, baggage doors on each side, so I don't think it's defective, I think they just came like this, which is very strange. So yes, you do get the ability to actually, you know, put things, you know, see through the, see, or like, you know, put things, you know, physically go through the door, but also you, you're missing that window, which is very strange. So I actually prefer the, the older Spectrum ones, because although 
yes, it looks a little bit more unre unrealistic with the door open. With the door closed, it looks more realistic because there's there is a window, which is kind of nice. But anyways, that's I think pretty much it for the sides. Uh, as I said, the lettering are are, are all very crisp on both uh, on both cars. There's some nice you know um, stirrup steps on the baggage door. Um, yeah, pretty solid on both cars. And yeah, nothing to really complain about on either one. Uh, let's take a closer look actually at the lighting because that's that is something that's quite different on these cars. All right, I turned, I did the um, layout lights, and so this is the new ones in the front, the old ones in the rear. Um, now again, I'm sorry, I don't have a stock combine car. This is a modified one. I did modify all my cars, uh, so this has my own LED package inside here. Originally, I'll tell you, it had a single incandescent light bulb in the middle and then it basically kind of diffused throughout the sides so the middle is very bright the sides got dimmer and dimmer and dimmer now obviously that's not the best look um, however it's very easy to add your own lighting as you can see I did with mine I just added LED strips uh, in fact I actually added constant LED strips so if I take it off the track you can see it still lights up which is kind of cool um, but anyways please ignore that that is my own modification more importantly this is what the new car looks like now as you can tell they did add LEDs they added very orange LEDs. I don't know why they chose such an orange color. It's not even close to yellow. Uh, it's a very much orange color, which I honestly dislike because it, it doesn't really look right. Like the, the, the original seats inside there are supposed to be green, like a light green, and they look almost yellow. They look almost gray in, with, because of that orange lighting. And another thing to note is that because it's, it's very easy to tell, it's not, it's not even lighting throughout the entire car. Yes, it's more than just one single light in the middle, you know, shining there. It's, but you can also tell it's very clearly three LEDs. There's one here, one here, and one right about here, I'd say. Um, it's not very even. They did add more lights, which is nice, but it's still very uneven. You can see how this part's a bit dimmer, this part's a bit dimmer, this part's a bit brighter, that part's a bit brighter. And uh, one more thing is it's not constant lighting. So if I take it off the track, it goes off. Now, the pickups on this car is quite nice, so it doesn't really flicker, per se, too much on the track. However, yeah, <laughs> it's, not, it's not the best lighting. Um, in any case, I would have, if I, if I received this car, um, you know, at the same time as this, I would have also r ripped out the LED board and added my own stuff, because I just need, I need that flush, you know, that, that even lighting throughout the car. It's just so much better. This one just looks really off, and it's just way too orange for me. It's just very uneven and orange. So honestly, I think either lighting package is uh, unsatisfactory. I think both could be definitely improved much better. But that being said, I do appreciate the LEDs uh, in the newer car. Um, but yeah, as I said, neither one I think is really any good. All right, now on the roofs, um, they're identical. What can I say? Uh, the newer one has a few more like stripes and rivets and whatnot. Um, the older one doesn't have that, it's also a bit more matte of color, but otherwise it's identical. They all have the same number of these event, uh, events that are signature to Pennsylvania cars. Um, yeah, same number and there really is no difference. Um, yeah, what can I say? There's no additional details in, in the new car, there's no separately applied, you know, rain guards on the bottom here or anything like that. It's just all basically the same thing. Nothing to really say here. Alright, now in the underbody detail. Uh, well, first thing to note, they're identical. <laughs> There's liter they're literally identical. The old one, you can see the clips, which ha hold the roof onto place. But um, yeah, the underbody details are identical. There's a cylinder here, a little thing there, a few battery boxes, uh, a few more cylinders. I'm not really sure what they're for, and these big ones here. Um, again, I don't know if this is particular to... I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's Pennsylvania per type uh, specific or something like that. But anyways, they're identical. There's no additional piping. It's not, you know, uh, I don't know. It's just there's, there's there's really nothing to talk about. They're the same thing. Um, one thing to note though uh, is the trucks. So in the old one here, what they did is the pl the truck in the middle is plastic. The sides here is die cast metal, and then what it does is basically each wheel is insulated on one wheel, and then so the axle is is powered, you know, on one side of the track, and then that axle touches the die cast sides, and so effectively you have bearing pickup. There's no wipers or contacts or anything like that, you know, grinding or adding friction to the wheels. It's just simply the sides are die cast, and then one wire goes to one side of the die cast metal because they're both, you know, the axle. Anyways, so yeah, each truck picks up on one side, so there's you know three wheels on this side, and then three wheels on the other, and that makes up for six pickup points total, uh, three on each side but also makes for bearing pickup. In the newer ones, um, the sides are all plastic, the middle is plastic, everything is plastic, so the truck is plastic. <laughs> um, they use copper contacts to pick up power. If you guys can see, you can see the little contacts right there, 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 and there. So what that means is 
yes, there are contacts that add friction while the car is rolling, which you don't really want, especially when you're rolling many cars at once. Uh, however, it does mean that there are four wheels that pick up power. The middle one is completely just powerless, which is kind of strange. Actually, I lied. There actually are pickups in the, in the middle wheel. That's, that's actually pretty cool. So actually, I lied. All six wheels pick up power, so in total there's 12 pickup uh, pick points, six on each track, which is definitely better than, old, than, than the older one. However, it is contact pickups, and then they also did cheapen the, the, the trucks to make them plastic. Um, again, performance-wise, I think they're both fine. Um, you know, the newer one, basically, the, the older one doesn't. It, it kind of does need a capacitor or something inside your circuit to make so the to make it so the lights are flicker uh, flicker free. The fir the newer one has enough pickups so the the lights don't really flicker during operation. However, if you have dirty track, it will because uh, there is no capacitor inside the circuit. Um, but yeah, the newer one definitely has more pickups, which is, which is definitely a plus. However, the older ones, I think they're fine. They actually roll a lot better. This car is far more free rolling than the newer one, which is quite interesting. And it really does add up, especially when you have a lot of cars going at once. Um, so that's something that, uh, that that is definitely something interesting to note. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the underbody is pretty much the same. Uh, you can see, see yet again another shot of the couplers. Uh, I modified this one, so that's why it's kind of messy here. But the newer one is just a big box. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the bottom. All right, so now at the conclusion. Um, first off, we need to talk about price. So, I un unfortunately I do not know the original selling price of these. However, you don't need to worry about that because you know you you're, you don't buy these things new anymore. You can only buy them old, used. And um, the average selling price for a used, like new condition, um, old Spectrum car is about fifteen dollars, give or take. Um, you can get them at train shows. If you buy them, if you buy it as a set, you can get it for a lot less. But fifteen, maybe twenty dollars, if you're if you're really unlucky, uh, you can get one of these. One of the newer ones um, at Train World and other train, you know, online hobby shops and eBay. Uh, you could get these new, ranging between fifty-five and seventy dollars. Now, so <laughs> the question ultimately is, if you want to, if you if you're value orient, if you're value oriented. The question is simply, do you want to pay two, three times, up to five times more for this car than this one? And the answer is obviously no. The new car, it it's definitely a bit more refined. You know, there's, there's newer paint. Um, there's a bit more detail. It's very questionable, though. They, I don't know why they would remove the grab irons uh, besides just to cheapen the production. But they, they added some details to the castings. However, overall, the car is still very much the same. They didn't add any more additional separate parts to the engine, in fact, or into the car. In fact, they actually reduced the number of parts. However, they did what they could. They added some more rivets and whatnot. But yeah, everything else is exactly the same. There's a bit better lighting. The trucks are a bit different. Couplers are definitely better. Diaphragms are changed. However, the car itself is still very much the same. You're not going to get an, any more detailed or less detailed car with the newer one, really. It's, again, a bit more refined. Is it worth fifty? If is it worth fifty-five dollars though, or plus? The answer is simply not. I honestly, if if you if you you know if you really care about some of the details and you really don't want to take your car apart, which by the way this is just literally snapped on, so you can just uh, undo the snaps in the bottom and the roof comes off. You could easily access everything on the inside. Um, if you're really afraid of doing all that kind of stuff, then I guess you could pay the extra for the new one. But in most cases, the older one, it's honestly good enough. The 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 flush mounted windows. And the uh, the you know the interior lighting is kind of nice on the new one, but personally, I don't mind spending some time with my cars. I actually enjoy you know the process of upgrading them. So the older ones, in my opinion, are definitely much better. Um, but yeah, again, if money is not your concern, then sure, new ones go for it. But the older ones, I think, are much better. Um, they're you know they're they're much better for value. They're not much worse. Put it this way, they're they're not much worse than the newer ones, and they're a lot cheaper. So it's honestly you know the decision's obviously up to you. But that's the comparison for these cars. Um, yeah. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I honestly think that Bachman kind of just decided to reuse the tooling from the really old ones and just trying to make some more bank off of their stuff. But you know what? That's Bachman. You know, you, that, that's kind of what I've come to expect from them. But, anyways, yeah. So let me know how you guys think down below, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was informative to making you know a decision for you or something like that, or just to figure out just to learn the differences between these cars. But that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.